This is Chapter Twelve of Alonzo Fitz. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Alonzo Fitz and Other Stories by Mark Twain. Chapter Twelve Concerning the American Language, being part of a chapter which was crowded out of A Tramp Abroad, M.T. There was an Englishman in our compartment, and he complimented me on. on what? Uh, but you would never guess. He complimented me on my English. He said Americans in general did not speak the English language as correctly as I did. I said I was obliged to him for his compliment, since I knew he meant it for one, but that I was not fairly entitled to it, for I did not speak English at all. I only spoke American. He laughed, and said it was a distinction without a difference. I said no. The difference was not prodigious, but still it was considerable. We fell into a friendly dispute over the matter. I put my case as well as I could, and said, The languages were identical several generations ago, but our changed conditions and the spread of our people far to the south and far to the west have made many alterations in our pronunciation, and have introduced new words among us, and changed the meanings of many old ones. English people talk through their noses. We do not. We say no. English people say now. We say cow. The Briton says cow. We, oh, come, that is pure Yankee. Everybody knows that. Yes, it is pure Yankee. That is true. One cannot hear it in America outside of the little corner called New England, which is Yankee land. The English themselves planted it there two hundred and fifty years ago, and there it remains. It has never spread. But England talks through her nose yet. The Londoner and the backwoods New Englander pronounce no and cow alike, and then the Briton unconsciously satirizes himself by making fun of the Yankee's pronunciation. We argued this point at some length. Nobody won. But no matter, the fact remains, Englishmen say now and cow for no and cow, and that is what the rustic inhabitant of a very small section of America does. You conferred your A upon New England, too, and there it remains. It has not traveled out of the narrow limits of those six little states in all these two hundred and fifty years. All England uses it. New England's small population, say four million, use it, but we have forty-five millions who do not use it. You say gloss of water, so does New England. At least New England says gloss. America at large flattens the A and says glass of water. These sounds are pleasanter than yours. You may think they are not right. Well, in English they are not right, but in American they are. You say flask and basket and jackass. We say flask, basket, jackass, sounding the A as it is in tallow, fallow, and so on. Up to as late as 1847, Mr. Webster's dictionary had the impudence to still pronounce basket, basket, when he knew that outside of his little New England, all America shortened the A and paid no attention to his English broadening of it. However, it called itself an English dictionary, so it was proper enough that it should stick to English forms, perhaps. It still calls itself an English dictionary today, but it has quietly ceased to pronounce basket as if it were spelt basket. In the American language the H is respected. The H is not dropped or added improperly. Same is the case in England. I mean, among the educated classes, of course. Yes, that is true. But a nation's language is a very large matter. It is not simply a manner of speech obtaining among the educated handful. The manner obtaining among the vast uneducated multitude must be considered also. Your uneducated masses speak English. You will not deny that. Our uneducated masses speak American. It won't be fair for you to deny that, for you can see yourself that when your stable boy says, It isn't the unting that hurts the horse, but the amma 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 on the odd highway. And our stable boy makes the same remark without suffocating a single H. These two people are manifestly talking two different languages. But if the signs are to be trusted, even your educated classes used to drop the H. 
they say humble now and heroic and historic etc but i judge that they used to drop those h's because your writers still keep up the fashion of putting an before those words instead of a this is what mr darwin might call a rudimentary sign that as an was justifiable once and useful when your educated classes used to say humble and heroic and historical correct writers of the american language do not put an before those words the english gentleman had something to say upon this matter but never mind what he said i'm not arguing his case i have him at a disadvantage now i proceeded in england you encourage an orator by exclaiming hear hear we pronounce it here in some sections here in others and so on but our whites do not say hear pronouncing the a's like the ah of ah i have heard english ladies say don't you making two separate and distinct words of it your mr burnham has satirized it but we always say don't you this is much better your ladies say oh it's awful nice ours say oh it's awful nice we say four hundred you say four as in the word or your clergymen speak of the lord ours of the lord yours speak of the gods of the heathen ours of the gods of the heathen when you are exhausted you say you are knocked up we don't when you say you will do a thing directly you mean immediately in the american language generally speaking the word signifies after a little when you say clever you mean capable with us the word used to mean accommodating but i don't know what it means now your word stout means fleshy our word stout usually means strong your words gentleman and lady have a very restricted meaning with us they include the barmaid butcher burglar harlot and horse thief you say i haven't got any stockings on i haven't got any memory i haven't got any money in my purse we usually say i haven't any stockings on i haven't any memory i haven't any money in my purse you say out of window we always put in a the if one asks how old is that man the briton answers he will be about forty in the american language we should say he is about forty however i won't tire you sir but if i wanted to i could pile up differences here until i not only convinced you that english and american are separate languages but that when i speak my native tongue in its utmost purity an englishman can't understand me at all i don't wish to flatter you but it is about all i can do to understand you now that was a very pretty compliment and it put us on the pleasantest terms directly i use the word in the english sense later eighteen eighty two aesthetes in many of our schools are now beginning to teach the pupils to broaden the a and to say don't you in the elegant foreign way End of chapter twelve